Hello, this is Reza Rat from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about two important functions in Power Query, either in Power BI Desktop or in Dataflow in Power BI Service or in Dataflow in Microsoft Fabric called Dataflow Gen 2, uh, which you can apply on your queries. One is called Reference, the other one is called Duplicate. They both create a copy of your table, but they do it differently and, and they are for different purposes. Uh, so I'm going to show you through demo, uh, two separate demos, two, two separate scenarios which one is good for duplicate, which one is good for reference, what is their differences, um, and let's go and check it out. Okay, the example I'm going to show you is in uh, Power Query in Power BI Desktop, but you have exactly the same um, setup inside Power Query in um, Dataflow or, um, or in Power Query in Dataflow Gen 2 in Microsoft Fabric. Uh, let's say in this example, what I'm trying to do is to go to this web page um, that I have over here. This is a web page that has um, some movies sales information. Um, and um, it's a public web page. I can go to Power Query here and say go create new query from web. Um, I'll paste that um, web URL over here. Um, and this would scan that page. I have a separate video about talking about getting data from a web page, so you can go and check that out. Uh, and uh, what this gives me is like the tables that I might have in that. Um, in that web page and I'll go and select the one that has this data. I think in this case it would be uh, it would be one of these tables. I'll get one of them which is a cleaner version of it, which is this one, right? So table two. I'll click on OK. This will bring that inside the Power Query in Power BI desktop. Uh, if you use um, Dataflow, it would be a little bit different um, experience, um, different functions to use, but it would be, um, again, the same functionality. So I have all of these, and this is for the first page of that website. Now, if you look at here, the first page has only 200 movies in it. If I scroll down, you see that it has um, from movies ranked number one all the way to movie ranked number 200, but it doesn't have more than that. If I want more uh, information, I can go to the next page. This would be a second page from movie 201 all the way to movie 400. As you see, the URL of this is different. Uh, so I want to exactly do the same thing, get data from the same page uh, and apply same time, same number of transformation. In this case, I haven't really done much of a transformation. It was mainly getting data from that source. But imagine in real world scenario, you might have done some transformation, data type changes, some kind of transformations as well. And you want to apply the same thing on another um, data source, which has a different data, but same structure. So what I can do in this case is I can copy this URL instead of going and doing that process again, I can right click on this and let's just rename this as well. I would call it sales page one. I can right click on this and use duplicate. So duplicate basically means that create an exact copy of this query with all the steps. You see this query has four steps. When I right click on it and create a duplicate, this new query uh, with a new name has exactly the same four steps. These two queries are separate from each other. These two queries are not uh, bound to each other. I can go and change one of them. It would not impact the other one. This means that I can go to this second one. I would actually rename it and call it sales page two. Uh, I can go to the source step, click on the setting of the source step. I would change the um, URL for that here because then this would get the second page information. Click OK. And then if I, um, let's, let's wait for this to, to refresh the data, bring the data. Uh, then if I click on the last step, I should have movies from 201 all the way to 400, right? And I can do this for like another duplicate, create this for um, sales number, uh, sales page number three and, and so on, right? And then later on, I can uh, append all of these together, which I have a separate video about append too. I can click here and say append queries uh, as a new query and append this one with the other one, 
right? Uh, because these two are two separate queries, so they can be um, they can be used totally separate. I can go and modify one of these, apply a filter in one of these, the other one wouldn't get impacted. Uh, when I go to view tab here, there's a really good diagram view under the view tab, under the um, query dependency diagram, which would show you how these two are actually built. So in this case, it would show me that these two queries are totally separate queries, although I created number two as a copy of number one, that duplicate is like a totally separate copy. It has a separate um, source, so I can go and change it. They both are from the same website, but one of them is page one, one of them is page two, and then I append them together. Whereas if I use something like a reference, experience would be slightly different. So let's um, have a look at the reference. Let's say I'm going to get data from an Excel source. In this case, this is an Excel source that has sales information in it. Uh, and I'm going to select the table that has sales data in it. Um, in this case, it would be this table, fact, internet sales. Uh, clicking on OK, so this table has sales information in it, which would load quite quickly over here. Uh, we have columns for every, um, uh, for like order number, for date, things like that. We have um, uh, one record basically per transaction in this scenario. This is a table that has like 60,000 records, something like that in this sample data set. Now in this, uh, in this table, I might have done some transformations, right? Or I might not. Let's say in this case, I have not done any transformation. I want this table to be loaded inside Power BI, plus the fact that I want an aggregated version of this table also to be loaded inside Power BI. Uh, but the aggregated should be based on this. Like this is one record per transaction. I want to create a aggregated version of this that has one record per product, and per customer, like aggregated per product and per customer, so that I can use that aggregation to speed up the process. I have another video about this kind of situation as well, that you would use aggregation in Power BI uh, to enhance the performance, right? That is the subject of a separate video. But you can use this method that I'm showing to you to create that aggregation. In this case, I want that aggregated table and this table, they both to be loaded into Power BI. And I want the aggregated table to be using this as a source in case I go and change this in the future, that aggregated also should change. They should not be separate copies. Duplicate in this case wouldn't be the ideal solution for me. What I'll do is I'll right click on this and this time I would use reference. What reference is, reference would also create a copy of that. But the difference here is that when I say reference, the new copy, is using that original table as a source. So when I look at this new uh, query, it has one step, which is source. That step, you see the formula of that step. That step's formula is saying that this is coming from this table, which is the source of this. This means that if I go and change that, this would also get impacted. Now let's say this new table has a group by option for it. So let's go and just do that group by option so that you get to see uh, what I mean. Let's say I'm doing the group by based on customer key and product key. If I can find it, here it is. Right click group by, uh, sorry, not on pivot. My computer performing a little bit slow. So that is why I it automatically changed to a wrong transformation. So selecting these two, right click group by, uh, these two are my group by fields and then let's say I want count of rows plus another um, aggregation which is sum of the sales amount and I would call that sales, right? So this is a grouped data and I have other videos about grouping data using Power Query separately. You can go and check it out. Uh, this grouping, uh, once done, it would reduce the number of records I have in this table. So if the original table is 60,000 records, this is much smaller than that. So I would call this... Uh, sales ag or sales aggregated, right? Now the idea here is that I want um, the, uh, these two are dependent on each other. If I go to the sales table in the future and I apply a filter in here and I say, for example, um, I want only the records that their order date are, um, let's put a date and time filter. Um, and I would say they are between 
in this case my data is between 2005 and 2008 so I'm going to say these are for now let's go and change it to a to a year that is related to that particular data set so let's say from 8th of September 2006 all the way to to 8th of September 2009 or to 18th of September 2009 so I actually changed the range of the date in my original fact table once I do that my original fact table the data of that would get filtered but also this would get filtered as well. It is still processing to refresh the data. Normally it is not this slow. Um, I'm running the recording app at the same time in this machine. That is why makes it, it makes it slower. So this would also get filtered. So this now would not be all the products or all the customers. This is only for products and customers sold within that range period. When I go and look at the view and query dependency this time, you would see a different query dependency diagram for this. Uh, here you see that this sales ag is actually dependent on the fact internet sales. This is reference. Uh, your referenced query would look at the original query. Uh, any change you do in your original query, the reference query would follow that, which is a really good example for this type of situation when you want to create aggregations and things like that because you want all the filters in the original query to be applying on the second query. Whereas for the other situation that you looked at, that is a good option for, uh, for when you have totally separate queries, um, totally separate data, they might have similar structure, you want to just copy this and reuse it. Although for that kind of situation, uh, there are also some other uh, solutions you can use. I have explained about Power Query functions that you can create. In this case, that function would go through all pages in that website would bring all of them together and combine them. Uh, but the idea here in this, um, in this video is to show you what is the difference between reference and duplicate. So this is reference, this one is duplicate. Uh, they both create a copy of the original table. The reference one would look at the original table. Uh, any changes on the original one would get impacted in the reference table. Whereas the duplicate, these would be totally separate queries. Uh, changes in the first one would not impact the second one, change in the second one would not impact the first one. Uh, and these two can be used in um, totally different situations like the scenarios that you have seen, both in Power BI desktop, in Power BI website, in Microsoft Fabric website. I hope you, li uh, you like this video and you go and use it in your um, implementation. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Microsoft Power BI and fabric. Until the next video, bye.